There's been a conversation lately if Lonzo Ball will ever play basketball again. And truth be told, with the nature of this injury, I... For the past year, Lonzo Ball has been dealing with a very scary knee injury, but a lot of people don't really know what's going on. About a year ago, Lonzo Ball had a very scary injury, and we thought this would just be a short period of time that he'd be missing. But as we can see, Lonzo Ball has barely even shown any signs of recovering. In fact, multiple doctors have said they have no idea what's going on with this. They've never seen an injury like this before, which is a very scary thing to hear because we've seen injuries in the past like ACL and MCL injuries that are very bad, but at least we know what they are so we can treat them. As of right now, if we looked at an injury report, I'm pretty sure the term they're using is a torn meniscus, but doctors don't even have a real answer. Mind you, a torn meniscus can take about three to six months to repair. It's been a year. And even if we want to play the game, oh, it could take longer, but at least by a year, we should see some progress. A lot of people have looked into the injury trying to figure out what it is, and some people have a bunch of ideas like maybe it didn't get treated right, maybe the Bulls didn't know what they were doing. In fact, from what I've seen, most people are actually blaming the Chicago Bulls medical staff because because they just felt like they didn't do their job. And sure, while that is a possibility, I think I have an idea with what's going on, but this didn't happen about a year ago. This has been going on for years. Now, it's no secret, Lonzo Ball has definitely been injury prone. It seems like every time he's been on a team, he's had one big major injury. But why is Lonzo so injury prone? Well, after doing a lot of research, I think I have an idea, but we have to go back to all the way when Lonzo was just a kid. In fact, we need to talk about LeVar Ball. If you were watching the NBA around 2000, 17 or you were just on the internet in general you probably know who lavar ball is it seems like every week we had some storyline or some quote that he said that was the most insane stuff you could have heard now at the time i think a lot of people just assumed that lavar ball was on the perk 37 but it came very apparent as the years went on that he didn't actually believe these things and it was more of a marketing thing which definitely is a smart thing to do now the biggest reason why lavar ball was famous is because he was hyping up his sons and saying all these ridiculous things that people didn't know if they were going to actually happen i mean it's pretty simple the more famous lavar got the more famous his sons got and as they started to get more famous we started to learn more details about the boys growing up and we were learning how lavar ball was training his sons from a very young age but the tactics he was using were a little bit different compared to your normal coaches for example he would have his sons play older competition all three of the sons would be playing against junior high teams and mind you Melo, who was the youngest was in kindergarten playing against way older kids but that's not the most glaring i feel like some coaches do that and it's kind of an aggressive method but it's not that detrimental but something that can be very dangerous to someone's growth is the use of weights and not using them properly many workout videos of Lonzo Ball have came out over the years and we can see that he has some of the worst form in weight training that I've ever seen and having terrible form especially for a very long period of time can well lead to injuries now maybe some of you actually work out a lot and in the comment section you might say oh I don't think this plays as big of a factor maybe it hurts him a little but not that much but what I think hurt Lonzo the most is AAU basketball. Now, AAU basketball is some of the most important basketball you can play as a kid, especially if you want to make it to the NBA. But we're starting to notice a pattern with injuries and they're all lining up to one common factor. Players like Lonzo Ball and Zion Williamson are two players who have played a lot of AAU basketball. And orthopedics have done a lot of research, including Baxter Holmes, who actually is a writer for ESPN, and here's what he found. They discovered that players who specialized in one sport and played year-round AAU basketball would suffer from a lot more injuries compared to others. But how much of a risk is it compared to others? Well, about 125%. And as someone who knows a lot of people who have played AAU basketball in the past, they've told me it's like working a full-time job. You got practices in the morning, you have practices after school, you might even have a game. There's so many things that AAU players have to do. So let's think about it. Who has played AAU basketball, which according to science can make you get injured more than other players, who has not only been working out ever since he was 12 years old, but he's had some of the worst form you can see and who is the player that has been playing basketball at the ymca ever since he was six years old so who's the player well it's lonzo ball everything is lining up that from lonzo's development it has set him up for failure because like i said earlier lonzo ball has been very injury prone over his career and the unfortunate reality is that this isn't something you can just reverse these are effects that lonzo is going to be dealing with for his entire career there's no real way to stop this and this injury that lonzo has i think this 
this is something that was supposed to happen. Now, do I think his injury should have been this bad? Well, I really don't know. And especially the fact that doctors have no idea what's going on, that scares me even more. But maybe this theory isn't right. Maybe Lonzo Ball, he trained a lot as a kid, but that's not the reason why he's been injured. Maybe that study, all the stuff we found out that LeVar told us was either a lie or it's just a little bit fabricated. Maybe there's even the possibility it's just a coincidence and it has no relation. Well, I have another set of theories that I want to go over. I was looking on Reddit for answers. I know, what a great way to start a conversation. But someone pointed something out that I thought was very interesting. Someone said that they started to notice a pattern with the Chicago Bulls and them mishandling injuries. Derrick Rose, Luol Deng, and now Lonzo Ball. These are all examples of that. Which, now that you start to think about it, makes a lot of sense. Also, I don't know if this is just my perspective, but I feel like the Chicago Bulls are always a team that are constantly getting injured. I also found a comment on a YouTube video when I was doing some research. This person said they are a professional athlete, and when he talked to Otto Porter, who used to play on the Bulls, he told me that the Bulls fucked up his diagnosis, and that they made him play on a messed up foot. I want you to take that with a grain of salt because I don't know who this guy is, we don't know if he's telling the truth, but it is very interesting that the Bulls have a very big history when it comes to medical problems for their players. Now, at the time of recording this, it is apparent that Lonzo Ball is going to be shut down for the entire season. In fact, this came out about a couple days ago. And this really does suck for the Bulls because I think losing Lonzo Ball exposed a lot about the team. Last season, the Chicago Bulls were consistently a high seed in the Eastern Conference. In fact, at one point, I think they were the one seed. And I noticed that when Lonzo left the team due to injury, the Bulls dramatically fell down in the standings. And if you look at the stats, you're not going to really be able to tell. You might say, oh, Lonzo is just a rotation player, but that's a lie. If you watch the game, you could see Lonzo Ball was easily a difference maker on the court. Having Lonzo on your team makes the offense a lot faster, and that was something that the Bulls really thrived on. Without Lonzo, it's being exposed that Chicago has a terrible half-court offense. Also, Lonzo was able to space the floor. I know earlier in his career, he wasn't that good of a shooter, but in Chicago, he developed into an amazing shooter. In fact, he was shooting 40% from three on about seven attempts. So the stats may not support what I'm about to say, but Lonzo Ball is the X factor of the Chicago Bulls. And without Lonzo, I don't think the Bulls would be a good team. And the unfortunate reality is that the Bulls might never get Lonzo back again. There's been a conversation lately if Lonzo Ball will ever play basketball again. And truth be told, with the nature of this injury, I can't give you a final answer. I feel like at the end of my videos, when I'm coming to a conclusion, I'm usually pretty confident in what I'm saying, but in this case, I'm not. I've been watching basketball for more than 10 years. I'm 18 years old. And in my life watching basketball, I have never seen an injury this bad of this magnitude. And in the past two to three years of me covering basketball, I've never seen an injury like this. As of right now, all we know is that Lonzo Ball is going to be out for the rest of the year, and there is a possibility he could return in the 2023-2024 season. I don't know what the odds are of that happening, especially with everything we know now, but if Lonzo Ball can somehow figure out what's going on and he can be treated and he does all the recovery he needs, I really hope he comes back. I do have some good news to end off the video. Apparently, Lonzo Ball is going to be receiving a platelet-rich plasma injection in his knee. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to fix the problem, but I think it is going in the right direction. Hopefully, the next time I make a video about Lonzo Ball, it's about his amazing play on the court. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like on this and subscribe to the channel. And don't trust the Bulls medical staff to do anything.